Jacob Mons out into the tap. Oh, no! Back throw. He's still alive. Luigi Moore has lost all his Kuna. Needs it's one more hit. The ex Kuna coming. He's gonna oh, jump. Oh, He's Moroto. gonna jump. Oh! Oh! It's oh, Russian oh, medium oh, after the block. Oh, Shoulder. Oh, my day. And Bonchak finally converts. One more hit can do it. Peekaboo's. He's looking to close it out with the perfect. He oh, he it. gets it. CEO 2019 champion. Give it up for me. Hey, everyone, and welcome to Esports in 30. I am Brody Moore, and the man beside me is none other than Drew Face. Now, Drew, there are probably some jabronis out there that didn't see what went down this weekend. What went on? Brother, I bring to you a message from Daytona, Florida. There is something that happened this weekend. I, the purveyor of hype and fighting games, brings to you CEO when wrestling and fighting games come together. Well, yes, it was definitely one of the highest events of the year. Jesus, before we get to chatting, let's start our CEO recap with some Street Fighter V highlights. Ah! those plus frames and that time he tries to challenge the CA! John Thing with the oh three frame shot! The unification is complete! The CEO champ taking out the CEO champion! Dago in a great position now, just gotta be careful. Yeah, Dago yeah, goes for a there. fake out on that boom, another one! Oh, oh my god! No! And that time a young oh my jump god. In. The preemptive jump in a Bonchan! It's like he's seen this entire set before. On the bottom. And the throw. All the right reads from Bonchan. Another meaty. I'll just interrupt that. Oh my god, didn't get the trip guard there. The recovery on the trip guard's gonna do it. Bonchan! Oh my day, what a dominant performance, Logan. Oh, oh no. that. Sweet recovery, that was greedy for Fudo. Oh, no, the cancel! Oh, the call out! Man, he's going yes! Oh, and he gets it wrong, that's the wrong! <laughs> and it's oh, another oh, set point for Matchable. Oh, he's he's so oh, oh, no, he's going to the Oh, no, he's going to And Matchable is going to win his finals! Wow! What a turnaround. Chooses not to get the side switch off that. He goes to the back row. Back to oh, Newsroom. Just click with a take go. Oh, oh my, my God, chase. what a turnaround! on a slide. Oh, 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 what throw bait! He can't, he, has to, he just has to take the throw. He can chip him out. Oh, he's Stand medium connect. Oh, oh no, 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 no. <laughs> And Bonchan is in grand finals. Oh my, he's taking every throw in the activation of plus. Oh, oh he just went for it. Oh, oh my oh, God, no, he dropped it. it. Oh, he dropped no. it. Oh, Fujimura has no kunai left. He's got the CA. He can't get hit. Matsumo can't get hit. Oh, oh my God! Gazagiri into oh. the critical art. I told you, Logan. When is your day? It's your bloody day, mate. That's, this is so tight. Goes in. Fujimura oh. gets the counter hit. Release. Is yes. it going to be enough? Yes. Oh. And we Fujimura. have a reset. <laughs> Fujimura has reset the bracket. Oh, that great neutral jump. jump. Perfectly timed. Hardly used the jump against Kunai, but yet one chance ready to anticipate it. Oh! oh and Fujimura oh. eats a perfect now. Death oh. throw ticked. One more hit for Montana into the tap. No! Oh. Oh. Back throw. He's still alive! Fujimura's lost all his Kunai. Needs one more hit. It's the EX Kunai coming. He's gonna oh. jump. Oh. He's oh. gonna oh. jump. Oh. 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 Drew Bonchan has finally done it. Not only does he have his first premiere under his belt, he also has a belt to show for it. To help us break down all the Street Fighter V action, let's welcome in FGC commentator Ultra David. What's up, buddy? What's going? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. Yeah, of course, our pleasure. I need some experts to break down this hype uh, for me. So why don't we just dive right into Bonchan's win, man? Uh, he's been grinding for a while. He's been so close, but he finally got it. How did he finally get this elusive premiere? 
I think it's not a surprise that he won in Premier. He mm -hmm. has won big tournaments in the past, and he's done it with weaker characters than he ended up doing it with this time, with Karen. So I'm not surprised at all. The only, maybe if there was a surprise, it was that he didn't win Premiers for a little while, yeah. but you know, he took some time off from playing competitively, and you know, only half a year after really coming back in force, he's already won a major Premier. So I, I think it's not a surprise. I mean, like, look, you and I both know, David, that Bonchan is a Sagat player. I don't know why he decided to play Karen to win this, and I know that he won most of this tournament <laughs> with Karen. Does yeah. he need to stick with Karen to continue to take home the trophies and get those belts? Honestly, probably. He honestly probably <laughs> does need to stick with Karen. Sagat is, I think, Sagat's okay. Sagat is, I think, underrated in some ways, but he does definitely have some bad matchups. There are some matchups that you do not want to be playing against. And I think some of them were the characters he was playing against. Like, if I wouldn't want to play Sagat versus Ibuki. I wouldn't want to play Sagat versus uh, Nikali, which we saw in top eight as well. So in those, for sure, at a minimum, I think he needs to stick with Karen. But, you know, there's a lot of matchups where Karen is probably better than Sagat. So even if Sagat is maybe doable, if you really want to win a premiere, there's a lot of money on the line. There's prestige on the line. Like there's a lot on the line. Then you got to give yourself the best chance that you can. So are you saying we should all be tier enthusiasts like Bonch? <laughs> I think that you should pick the character that is the strongest and that fits with what you like to do in fighting games. So it, it may not be that that means you should play like the best character in the game, but there's probably some character in like the top 10 or 15 or something that is that fits with what you like to do that is maybe better than some other character that you could otherwise play. This, uh, this, yeah. this is what I was going to ask. It's like a, f a forum, was this, uh, you know, more of just the character fit his play style a lot better? Or was it just that the character, you know, is a better pick overall in all the other matchups? Well, I, Karen is a better pick in terms of the matchups, but I think that Karen fits his play style well. He's been playing Karen for a long time. I mean, right. this, is not a, this is not a new thing for him. He's been playing Karen since, since pretty early. Yeah. Um, so it's not like this is a new switch that he's made. There are some other people who have just recently switched to Karen because they think that she's really good. This is not the case for him. So I, I think he must have identified her as being a character that fits with what he likes to do. Now, is it what he really wants to do is play Street Fighter Four Sagat, which doesn't exist in Street Fighter Five. Yeah, no. So that's that's it. I mean, but but aside from that, yeah, I think Karen fits what he likes to do pretty well. Sure. All right, now let's, uh, let's move on and talk about some other people, too, because the man that he beat was also on an absolute tear going into Grand Finals. How did Bonchan overcome the bracket reset and defeat Fujimura? He was cheap. I already, yeah, got, okay. it. I already got it, David. He was cheap. Okay, what, all right, all right, bring it. He was that cheap. Was <laughs> he was cheap. Ibuki's a cheap character, all right? Ibuki's one of the cheapest characters I've ever seen. That character who makes you have to alternate block to get out of a mix-up, that is, that is not fair. That is not a fair mechanic. But do you think that she's cheaper than Karen? No, Karen is more brain straightforward and Karen's linear. Karen's cheaper? Yeah, I think Karen's way cheaper. That character presses beam kick or stand roundhouse B trigger and you win. And there's no scaling on that super. <laughs> no she way. She does a ton of damage, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people are talking about her as being, you know, definitely top tier. Some people think she's the best right now. I don't know if I caught into that, but no, no, no. she's definitely really good. You just have to have like really, really strong reactions. I mean, that's useful with any character, but she like so much depends on you hit confirming every single crouching medium kick, every single standing strong, every single standing pierce. You can't miss it or the or the strength of the character is gone. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like that's, while she is really good, you have to be at a level like a Bonchan or a Punk or just really a few players in the world uh, to make her be that effective. And Bonchan is there. He's, he's always, had great adaptation. His movement's always been really good. I think we saw that really well, I would say. His movement was excellent. His hit confirms were really strong. Um, so I, I think that he, you know, his, his play style versus Fujimura was just kind of what he's been doing. But, you know, in those individual mix-ups, sometimes he was ready, things worked out. It's hard to sometimes pinpoint exactly why somebody wins on any given set. But, yeah, I think that all the aspects of his game were really, really going well. Are we going to see a lot more like Karen's just popping up then, do you think, in the next little bit? Oh, for we sure, because a Pookie's a way harder yeah. character. A Pookie's a way harder character. It's a Karen, yeah. take, it's a Karen takeover, right? <laughs> yeah, it's definitely Karen takeover. That blonde girl is going to ruin lives. Mm -hmm. I, I, anyways, yeah, so uh, Fujimura went on a, an epic loser's run, though, to get to Grands, but he was dropped in losers all the way back by um, John Ding. Uh, can you talk to us about this crazy loser's yeah. run, just um, how it was crazy, the, the things he did with his Ibuki as well? 
it's super long to go all the way through losers like he did yeah. from pools that exactly. that trip is typically about ha twice as long as if you went went through winner's side um and so yeah you have to beat way way more people it's very difficult but he's he's such an innovator and he's so prepared i i feel like every single time he hits somebody it's with the whatever the maximum combo damages into setup is whenever he's in a certain spot on screen it's like always the right spot where he can react with whatever the proper thing is he just he always seems so ready and he's been doing well so you know when he lost in pools that was maybe more a surprise to me than that he made this long losers bracket run junting is really good by the way at street fighter not mm -hmm. just that technique but yeah, that the fact that he lost is the surprise rather than him making it through losers. Mm -hmm. Speaking of John Ding, David, you and I are Street Fighter OGs, and I'm starting to notice a big problem in Street Fighter V. A really big problem. All right. We got these anime players, and we got these Tekken players trying to take <laughs> all our money. David, tell us what's going on, because Book also beat Luffy. What are allowing these Tekken gods to come in and challenge our Street Fighter gods? Do you think this has always happened? I feel like there's nothing new about this. It's always been the case <laughs> that cycle. people, people like congregate in one or two games typically. Like back in the day, even if you didn't love it, everybody played Third Strike or CVS2. Like regardless yeah. of whether you were a Marvel player or a Tekken player or a KOF player, everybody also played those games. And I think that's Street Fighter V right now. Everybody plays that game. And it's got, you know, even on top of that sort of just general that always kind of happens there's a good incentive to play it uh there's a lot of money there's a lot of money and so players like machibo who is you know a legend in guilty gear financially if he wants to be a pro gamer it can't really be in guilty gear right now unfortunately it's got to be in street fighter or one of just a couple of other options so he's made the switch as a result i mean back in the day fudo made the switch from virtua fighter to street fighter Dual Kevin is now playing Street Fighter full time instead of Marvel. Like this, this happens, and it's both because it always happens, and because now there's also financial incentives on the line. Yeah, that's, that's your show right there. That's my show for sure. We got I, David. I know you can't see it, but we are definitely putting up some money signs. We all know why we play Street Fighter Money Five with the S dollar sign. <laughs> I mean, yes. I really like the game, and and in talking with Dual Kevin, for example, Dual Kevin really likes the game. He's been playing it the whole time. Yeah. Uh, I haven't talked with like Machibo about it. It's like a language barrier. But in terms of the other players who have made that switch, it's not it's not just because of the money. It really I mean, there is a financial reason to to play it if you want to be a pro gamer, but in terms of why you play it from the initial level, I mean it's you can't just go directly from okay, I'm a legend in Guilty Gear to I'm gonna win a yeah. Street Fighter Major. I mean, there there has there's like a lot of steps in between, yep. and those steps suck, and you're probably not gonna do it if you hate the game. So I, mm -hmm. I really think that it's more than just that it's there's money on the line. It's that this is a game that a lot of people like, and there's there's like network effects working for it to, you, to you have, have a lot to of enjoy play. what you're doing first for too, sure. right? Yeah. I mean, this patch, this version of the game is actually one of the most enjoyable Street Fighters I've played in a long time. Like you and I were like you were mentioning it. They've managed to mostly iron out the kinks that everyone had with the game, and on top of that, they're not patching anything, shouts to Kage. So we are like adapting to this new meta. But speaking of adapting, <laughs> man, Fujimura. Yeah? Well, that run he had, yeah, not so easy. And he got eliminated, like he almost, almost got eliminated by Fudo. Yo, Fudo, is cur he's cursed though, I think. He dropped the combo that would've like ended the whole thing, right? Like, is it just a curse? Like, is it, it that's, it's destiny for Fudo? If you look at that match, Sure, Fudo could have won it if he had taken, if he had done that one combo, right? Yeah. But uh, Fujimura could have won it the round earlier and also in that same round. And then in the final round, there were also moments where it could have gone back and forth. It's just always, it, that's, that happens, you know? I mean, that's not, is Fudo cursed? I don't think so. It's just that he's, he's extremely strong and super consistent. And... I don't really know what's preventing him from taking more majors than he has, okay. but the fact that he gets second place and he gets to grand finals so often or third place or whatever it is, that it's not like a sign of weakness or anything. You know what yeah. I mean? Like that's that is him being one of the absolute top five players in the world well, for sure. Yeah, he that's, is that's, in no, that that's no easy feat. Yeah, the bot <laughs> yeah. don't lie. You know what I'm saying? The bot definitely doesn't lie. Sometimes you just can't win them all, right? No, yeah. yeah. For sure. <laughs> No, that's, that's true, but it, it's just got to, like, eventually get frustrating, you know, getting, 
you know, being just c consistent at the top, yeah, is great, but like you want to be the top top. I mean, right? like even <laughs> Fudo's even getting second and getting seconds. Like Tokido has more second places than Fudo right now. That. Like, yeah. yeah, like, Dave, you see that three, man. That, that was did, some funny I stuff. Did, yeah. But speaking of surprises, because that was a surprise to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another surprise in top eight was oh, the Marvel yeah. player duel, Kevin, yeah. man. He brought in the whole Marvel 3 community for the entrance. How has he been able to translate his Marvel 3 play into that top eight finish at CEO? Yeah, this is not a surprise either. You know, this is this is one of the best Marvel players in the world. And if you are one of the best players in the world at any game that has any kind of significant player base, then I feel like you you can probably make the switch into some other game if you like it and if you really try hard at it. He's been playing Street Fighter V the whole time, like yeah. since launch. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But sure. of course his focus was Marvel 3, and then it was Marvel Infinite. And while I'm sure he would, you know, wish that Marvel Infinite did better and that it was, you know, still a major game that it was played by a lot of people. It's not the case, and so he has recognized that and has, you know, sort of transitioned to focusing more on Street Fighter V. And yeah, no, no surprise. You you see a lot of the same things that you see in his Marvel play. You see really, really good space control because he was able to play a zoning space control game in Marvel, which is hard, yeah. especially Marvel Infinite. That's super hard. But he did it because he has great understanding of spacing. Uh, his reactions are really strong. His movement is really strong. He's got a character in Rashid that can do all these things really well. So I, I think that it's. His, his character choice, his strengths in Marvel, they all translate very well, I think, to Street Fighter V. So what, what, what's like kind of a, a jumping period? So obviously a lot of these guys have been cross-training in a Street Fighter V since launch and playing it for a while. But if a, if a player were to come over from Tekken or Marvel right now, not have played Street Fighter V before, how long before they're able to crack into, you know, that, that top, you know, 32 kind of area? I mean, that's, that's a couple of years, probably. Okay. You know, I, I know, for example, that Machibo uh, he has really ramped up his efforts in Street Fighter V over the past two years, and like now he's doing it. This year he's doing it. This year he's, he's killing it. But he was a good player, like immediately, of course. But in terms of his ability to get top 32, top 16, top, eight, it's been a tr it's been a gradual movement for him. You could see in his results, like okay, now he's top 32. He's top. Okay, he's, it's a gradual thing. And now, quite a while later, he's he's in that short list of some of the best players in the world. So it's not. Mm. It's not a fast transition. It's something that you really have to spend time on. And that, that's why I say it's not something you can do if you don't like the game. Yeah. If, if you think the game sucks, you, you just too much time You're invested. No. It's just not worth it, yeah. At the end of the day. Anyways, Ultra David, unfortunately, we are out of time with you, but I just want to say thank you so much for joining us today, and we appreciate chatting some Street Fighter with us. Thanks a lot for having me. Yo, now, best, of course, <laughs> hey, I'm trying to throw. Get hey, my bad, my bad. No, there's so many other events to talk about from CEO. <laughs> Let's check out the absolutely epic Tekken 7 event. He's trying to sidestep. That might be it. You have to be careful. Don't whip. Don't whip. Oh, my God. And oh, my God. He's doing it standing. He's oh. doing it standing. Oh, my God. This is huge. Oh, yeah. Is he going to play defensively or is he going to try to close it out here? What's going to happen? Gotta be careful. Oh, the my God. He's oh, not he's oh, my God. What the hell? He's a god. Chanel's a god. That is Are a you second me? time. Knee looking to close out game one. Oh, Kokomo yeah. still has him like to work with. Now it raises another bad one. Knee gonna take the first game. Yeah, okay. Oh. Oh, lights out. This is gonna be close. Not gonna be in, but man, one more mix up to do it here. All right. Oh, and again, that double will low. Do it. Damn, that was quick. Knee taking it with a convincing two to zero over Kokoma. My gosh, he has him there. This is bad for JDCR. He's in rage now. He's gonna have to do something. One bar. No side to Hawkins that time. Uh oh, this is bad. Yeah, very bad. The 50 50 is going to come to play down forward one or down two. And there's a down forward one. Knee three rounds straight here. He doesn't have enough life here. One more hit can end it. Yeah, but rage. Anything can happen. What's but he going to do? Trying to close it out. One pixel left for JJ. And the down two going to take it. And Knee going to advance to the grand final. Oh, man. It has rage as well. A lot of damage. Oh, my gosh. The third, third hit. hit. Finish it. Power crush again. Oh, watch out. Not not that much life left there for Rongju. And look at that. Left on the down back, too. This is how we got countered last time. Oh, great positioning there. Able to use the throw break in, to his advantage. Oh, boy, that it, it is. Chanel 2 0 oh, over Rangju. 15 seconds left. It blocks. 13. Oh, the what a sidestep. Step. To the wall. 
and it's gonna be Chanel going up two to zero now. Got the lead. JD Sharp's got the race. Punish. Okay, I like it, and he does have the lead, so he's oh, gonna have to be man, careful so here. So scary, so scary. Block the rage. I fly makes up the low. Four seconds. Who's gonna take it? Jay Sharp's got the lead. Two seconds, one second. Who's got it? Oh, Jay he pulled Sharp. it off. It's a tie. It's a tie. But Chanel because, wins. Because it's a tie, he had the round lead, and it's all over. So close every round at the time. Why that so bad? The big bad one. Good and that night. Might be game one. He's got wings. Oh god, the rocket launcher. He they, wants to take oh the tournament. Oh no, the entire arsenal here from Steve. Rage mode for Chanel. Last chance for the tournament. Dang, oh, that it. was big. He ducks it. He's gonna finish the combo. He's gotta finish it. Boom! We're living. Yeah, this Chanel's is the poke his way back without getting counted. Big lead this time for knee. It's a race against Simon. Oh, the life no. bar. One more hit can do it. Peekaboo, he's looking to close it out with the perfect. He oh, he gets, gets, gets it. CEO 2019 champion, give it up for me. Nee walked in with a Thanos gauntlet and walked away with a CEO belt. Now, Drew, talk to me about this man. How was he able to snap away all of his competition? It was Drew, nuts. Brody, we talk about this man every week. Yeah. Every time there's Tekken, we talk about Nee. Uh -huh. He is the center of attention. He is the man to beat. He is the greatest of all time in Tekken. And once again, he proves why he's what the is greatest. It? Like, is, it, is it just like his training? Is it his mentality? Like, there's It's a mix of talent and a mix of his competition and a mix of his training, mm -hmm. right? Because he gets to play against top-level competition all the time. Well, I think you're going to say his competition's not good enough. That's oh, why. <laughs> no, no, come on. If you're that good, the people you play have to be even That's just as true. good That's or better, true. right? And so he's Korean, obviously, the top-level competition. Yeah. And he got, he got to play Steve. He is the only Steve player I know mm -hmm. in the world that can play Steve that good. And he's so nasty with the bobbing and weaving. So what can you say? Nee, when's another tournament? Yeah, he's da, not da, 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 da. right? <laughs> nah, of course not. All right, well, like, before we talk about like the grand finals, I want to talk about Nee's battle then against JDCR. These guys have been like having sets together for like a long time, and, oh, yeah. and Nee always seems to have the edge. In these past few matches, JDCR though has struck with Armor King. Um, so w was this a surprise, or like uh, was this kind of a natural progression for uh, JDCR? I feel like. JDCR knows there's some potential of Armor King. Mm -hmm. Armor King's not really great at keeping pressure, but he's an amazing character in terms of when he does get his pressure going on, when he does get that knockdown, the mix-ups are ridiculous. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think he's sticking with uh, Armor King. But like those two have a long storied history. In fact, if yep. it wasn't for Nii, you would have no JDCR. Nii, back, back in the day, he wasn't as friendly as he is now, wasn't that nice, calm, collective person as we know him now. He yeah. used to be, uh, the linchpin oh, of yeah, Korean yeah, Tekken okay. at Green Arcade. And so he would always be beating up his like training partners and all these other Korean players yeah. until JDCR one day in Tekken Tag 2 rose up from the arcades and managed to body him. Yeah. And when he finally did, he got hella salty and they've been, that's been Just a long, back and forth yeah, that's been a yeah, long yeah, running yeah. rivalry since then. That's, that's, that's great to see like that rise uh, up just because of, of Nii and now they're kind of head to head all the time. It's a great storyline. Oh, oh, now sure. let's, let's get into the grand finals. And it was a Rock's Dragons head to head. Uh, Nii and Chanel, uh, for Chanel to get to that point, um, you ran through losers all the way to get there. That's gotta be like really tough to just keep yourself composed. When you go to loser's bracket or lower's bracket, you get to play double the matches. Yeah. And that Do you think just, the momentum helps? The, not only does the momentum help, but it kind of shows you how strong mm -hmm this Chanel is. Chanel has strong mental fortitude and that's how he's able to keep up, destroy that loser's lowers bracket with the, yeah. all those killers and make it to grand finals to face his teammate. Yeah. And that's what a testament to oh, Chanel. Well, I'm, I'm wondering too, because like he's got a deep pool of characters that he uses as well. I'm wondering if that helps him go through lowers because like nobody can actually watch the match before and be like, okay, this is what I'm gonna do because well, he, he can switch it plays, up so much. He plays Eliza. He plays a, a string of high pressure, high mix up, high risk, high reward mm -hmm. characters. And People, people get tilted when they play him because yeah. whenever he lands those high risk maneuvers, yeah. they're like, how did he land that? that? If I block that, he would have lost, but he always lands it. He makes the right reads and uh -huh. he's, just, he's just a beast. <laughs> okay, well, uh, let's talk about a swagger too. <laughs> this Woo. man, like this guy pops off, right? Like dancing in intros um, and always after his win is popping off. Like, is he right now the, probably the most entertaining person in Tekken, do you think? Or is there someone else that matches? I love Kokoma. I think okay. Kokoma has much more personality than, than the others, but Chanel is definitely up there as well. Okay. But I, like I said, Chanel's a, a, per, a great person to play with, a great ambassador of Tekken. I, I just love what he does, yeah. man. Your guy Kakoma, anyways, uh, he didn't win CO, but he did win the cosplay contest. Oh, of course he yeah, did. Yeah, so what of do you think of this guy's outfit? 
I love it. I love it, man. Min. He got the kimono on. He got the yeah. hair on. But he had to take it off. It was way too hot in Daytona. Yeah, Just like yeah. me right now. Yeah, Woo! <laughs> Just like me right now. But hey. He won the cosplay contest. That wig was worth it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, do you think maybe like I, I know a lot of people like amp it up for like CEO and stuff. Yep. Uh, do you think maybe this should be like brought this atmosphere other to other tournaments as well, or do you think it it should kind of just stick to that one place? I feel, I feel like, like if it's always happening, maybe we'll get more viewers all the time. I feel like organ if it if it works for you organically, you should do uh -huh. it. But CEO is so unique because they take these creative risks in their tournaments. Yeah. There's no other event that has a wrestling segment to it. Yeah. There's other events that have cosplays competitions, but not to this degree, right? Yeah. This is so, they, they put so much effort and time in making sure that every event they run is a premier event. Yeah, and that's yeah, yeah. why it's so hot, like, woo, so hot. <laughs> well, that's what, so, like, do you think it's like, obviously, I, I think wrestling is just like a perfect kind of match for FGC, of right? Of course, it's, the it's hype, one baby. One, it's ooh, head to head. Ooh. You got people like you yelling in the background, always, just hyping it up. Always. Do you think there's another kind of theme that could run with the FGC? Or is, is wrestling like the only one, that, the, it's the only one I can really think of. I'm wondering if there's like some other I mean, you, theme we could look, get. You know, FGC's got a beach little hip-hop. Beach party, like, FGC. <laughs> yo, there's beach parties. We always have a lot of after parties for yeah, FGC. Yeah, yeah. But another thing, too, is there's a lot of hip-hop influence in there. So we could probably fit that into another FGC event if it's organic. Yeah. So we'll that's, see. That's what I was wondering. I'm like, wrestling, it feels like just the most appropriate overall. Mm -hmm. Overall, but, for sure. Yeah. Now, it is time, Drew, for us to get to your MVP for CEO. So who are you handing your belt to? Oh, I'm definitely giving my belt to Chanel, baby! That was a crazy loser's run. But also... But man, also... Man, Kakuma's was up there, but... No, Chanel, baby! Forget about it, Chanel! You're the best! <laughs> so what, why... Okay, obviously there's a bit of a flip, a debate there on, on who it should be. So why, why are you picking Chanel? Like, give me the deets on, on why over Kakuma. What Chanel did, especially in that extraordinary loser's run, taking out all those names, JD Seymour, yeah. right? Kakuma. Yeah, oh my lord. And like much more. He cock blocked so many Americans, <laughs> right? He yeah. cock blocked so many Americans. Cuddle Core was about to beat him, this close to beating him. Yeah. Takes her out, Done. right? And all of a sudden, he goes on this extraordinary loser's run. And now he's, he, he, he just has to fight Nii, who he plays all the time as his training partner. Of course, he's going to lose to Nii. Yeah. Right? That's the one person you should expect to lose to, someone yeah. who knows you the best. So, like, what can you say? He, he is. He, what he did, he played double the amount of games compared to everybody else. A lot of mental fortitude was needed to do that. That's so fair. I think, I think he, he gets it. That's fair. All right, Drew, I'm going to let you uh, go. You've been popping off all day. I'm going to let you all go day, get a towel. Baby. There it is. Chanel is Drew's CEO champion. That's all for today's Esports in 30. Thank you to Ultra David for hanging out today. Tomorrow's center of attention is doted to you for the Epicenter Major. Until then, hit us on our socials at Squad State. We'll see you later.